All right. I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Did you watch the Super Bowl? Did you spend it with family? Did you go to church? What did you do? Whatever you did, I uh, hope it was good. Uh, I got the opportunity to, uh, I got invited to some friend's house. I hadn't been there before, hadn't really actually met these people. I call them friends just because I've come to think of them as that, but I've never actually met them. Um, so it was very nice to be invited, and they shared their house with their friends, and I got to meet a lot of them, and they were all fantastic up in Grass Valley. So uh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Byron and Bethany Dankers. Thank you for the uh, invitation. That was really nice. So it's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's what we're doing today. Ready for it. Excited. And um, we're going to get to it in just a second. As soon as I can find it. There it is. But first, thank you, Father. Thank you so much, my Lord. Thank you for the great message from the pastor where I attend church. That was, a, that was a great life lesson and an awesome reminder about what our obligation is and what you're expecting from us. By being a follower of your son, Christ Jesus, what you were expecting from us, what you've told us to do. And your son said, do not hide that light away under a basket or under a bushel. And instead, bring it out for all to see. And we're not. So many of us are not. We're just not. Father, I pray that that will dramatically change. Your people will wake up and will speak up boldly, regardless of any kind of consequences. Regardless of any kind of consequences, Father. And thank you for your guidance and your help. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Your correction, your love, your peace beyond all understanding during these times that are so obviously right in the last days. Father, please give us your Holy Spirit so we can really understand your word here and what you want us to know about you. Give us wisdom, discernment, and understanding, and revelation, the gift of prophecy that Paul told us to pray for. I'm praying for that for us. So, and the discernment, so important, so we know what's of you and not of the enemy. And we know what's of the enemy, not of you. We've got to be able to know. We need that discernment, Father. So I beg you for it now. And thank you for this time to read your word. It's in your name, Lord Yeshua, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, Steve Forget, what's up, buddy boy? You up in Montana or are you down here? And uh, Kelly, hi, hi, hi. What's going on, y'all? Um, here we go, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Sothenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling, with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you. Pay close attention to this. Good, Steve. Let's get together. Um, okay. Pay close attention to this. This is very important because what he's about to talk about 
is what I consider to be the absolute worst thing that ever happened to God's church, Christ's church. And that are de that's denominations. Nothing has divided his children more than denominations arguing over stupid stuff. Instead of sticking to the basics, which is Christ Jesus, Son of God, dead, murdered, came back to life, Three days later, and in him is our salvation. Boom. Everything else Jesus said, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. They're all right here in the New Testament. His burden is easy and his yoke is light. But yet, people get so divided over the stupidest things that they'll split into denominations and look what we have. Look what we have. They're all over. It's crazy what we have done to the Lord's church. In the beginning, they were called the way. That's what it was called. You part of the way? I'm in the way. I'm, I'm in the way. I'm in the way now because I'm commentating instead of reading the Bible. So let's get back to it. Um, verse 10. Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment for i have been informed concerning you my brethren by chloe's people that there are quarrels among you now i mean this that each one of you is saying i am of paul and i am of apollos and i of cephas and i of christ has christ been divided paul was not crucified for you was he or were you baptized in the name of paul I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius so that no one would say you were baptized in my name. Now I did baptize also the household of Stephanus or Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel, not in cleverness of speech so that the cross of Christ would not be made void. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of god for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever i will set aside where is the wise man where is the scribe where is the debater of this age has not god made foolish the wisdom of the world for since in the wisdom of god the world through his wisdom did not come to know god God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom. But we cre pre preach Christ crucified. To Jews, a stumbling block, and to Gentiles, foolishness. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen the things that are not so that he may. You know, let me, hold on, I want to get this right. I don't think the way I phrased that was right. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen, the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are so that no man may boast before God. But by his doing, capital H, his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It is, Kelly, close to bedtime. I still got a little work, though, because... Tomorrow I tape the uh, guest for this coming week's Do Not Talk, which uh, is the 
podcast that I host. And you can find it, find me on Rumble, rumble.com slash do not talk. And there it is, if you haven't checked it out yet. I talk about the two things you're never supposed to talk about, religion and politics. Huh, imagine that. All right. Have fun, y'all. See you tomorrow, Lord willing. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs>